In this video, we are going to take a deeper look into the In-Out Movement screen. By now, you're probably familiar with the In-Out Movement screen or have seen some previous videos on the In-Out Movement screen. In this video, we are going to go through more of a deep dive into features and functions you may not be aware of. Uh, some of them may not be activated, so you don't even know that they're there. And hopefully we can make your day a bit more streamlined and smooth and efficient with these additional features and functions. Before we start this video, I would like you to keep in mind about how you can modify your daily practices to accommodate the in and out screen. A good example of this is a lot of properties will print out reports. A good example of that is the arrivals list or the departures list, overdue arrivals and departure list, high bills report, in-house guest list, overdue accounts, deposits held. These are just some of the common reports that properties will print out on a day-to-day -day basis. But all of that information is right here in front of us on the in and out movement screen. Using the in and out movement screen, the information here is up to the very second information. When you print out a report, for an example, an arrival list report, if somebody cancels their reservation or moves it to tomorrow or doesn't arrive at all, that report is outdated. It doesn't automatically update with the information from RMS. Using the in and out movement screen, you have that information and it's the true and accurate and real time information. One thing I hear about reports is what if my system goes down? What if I can't access RMS? I hear this all day, every day. RMS is now in the cloud. As long as you have maybe your mobile phone, a mobile device, a laptop with a battery, a connection to the internet of any sort, you can access this live data. Whereas even if the system does go down and you have a printed out report, you may have inaccurate information. All right, to get things kicked off, we're going to start down the left-hand side in the filters and we're going to go to sharer's arrivals. So you'll see here we have sharer arrivals and sharer departures. Sharers are secondary or third guests on a reservation. So you may be familiar with the function of adding a second, third, fourth, fifth guest to a booking. Here we can see if they're arriving on separate days. A good example here, let's have a look at Zena here in our first one. You can see that this reservation is occupied, it's already arrived. So if we have a look at this reservation number 61, you'll see that this is William Moses. Down the left hand side, you can see that we have two guests. If we click on that, we can see that William here, he's the primary on the account. And then we have Zena arriving later. William arrived on the 27th of November and Zena is arriving a few days later on the 1st of December. That's today. So you can have guests arriving on different days. To change the date of the guest arriving, you will need to select the guest and then click on the ellipses and then choose edit dates. So from here, you can then change the dates that Zena is arriving or any guest for that matter. For you to be able to do this, you'll need to activate this function. This is activated under general information. Under reservation options, and you'll see here record guest movements within reservation. Once this is activated, that will also activate the function of individual date selection on individual guests within a reservation. And it will also add the option of share arrivals and departures on the in-app movement screen. Another option down the left hand side is the no show and cancelled functions here. If we have a look at our cancelled, we can see that there are a couple of cancelled reservations that were supposed to arrive today. Maybe a guest arrives and they said they have a reservation but you can't find it. You may find it here under the cancelled bookings. Cancelled reservations can be brought back into activity. So if you click on the reservation number, you can change the status up here by clicking on the change status icon and choosing unconfirm. Assuming that area is still available or that room is available, you can bring this back into an unconfirmed reservation and check them in, or you may need to change the area or the room that they're in. Okay, moving a little further down the left hand side, you can see there's an option here that says include sharer. Now this is slightly different to your sharer arrivals and sharer departures. The include sharer here 
if that's activated and click on search, you will see here that we now have reservation number two here has two guests arriving and reservation 14 has two guests arriving also. This will then show all guests that are arriving on a reservation, assuming they've been added. You can see here with uh, Andrew, Andrew is in an area, his area has already been assigned to him, whereas Jasmine's area is hyperlinked, which indicates that we can actually put Jasmine in a different room or area if we want to. You notice the same here with Brendan and Chelsea. Brendan is the primary on the account and Chelsea is the secondary guest. And we can move Chelsea to a second room if we want to. This is handy where you may need to have both guests sign a registration card or if you want to send both guests any kind of correspondence. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. Okay, the next option down the left hand side here, we have the show function. Here it says show all reservations. So this is showing all reservations. Now, it's a little bit confusing because it actually doesn't show the group masters. If we have a look down here, and we've got the group master option here. So if we click on that and search, we can see here that we have a group reservation here under the name of Freeman. A nice way to tell the difference between a group reservation and a sibling reservation or a master reservation and a sibling reservation is the reservation number is the same for a master booking and the individual reservation itself. Now this in effect is just a cover sheet for the group booking. So it actually doesn't take up an area. If we come down here and we choose all reservations plus group masters and we search, you'll see here that we have the group master which has the same reservation numbers. And then we have the two sibling reservations that have different reservation numbers from the group master. This is really handy when you have a lot of groups coming through you may only want to see the group master and not the individual bookings. And if you have guests that are arriving individually, you may want to see just the reservations so you can check the guests in one by one as they arrive. The next option down the left hand side, the category grouping, this requires a little bit of setup. So you can see here, I've put a couple of different room type groupings in here. I've got my apartments, cabins, facilities, long terms. This is really handy if you have a lot of reservations, you know, hundreds of reservations arriving today or whenever, and somebody comes to check in and say they're staying in an apartment. So from here, we can select apartment and filter, and we'll see just the reservations that are staying in the apartments. So to set this up, you'll need to set up your groupings first. Down the left hand side on the side menu, if you search for groupings, you find it underneath the lookup table of groupings. In your groupings here, you can see that I've set up my category groupings already or my room type groupings. So I've got my apartments, cabins, facilities, and groupings can be used in a lot of different areas as well. If you want to find out more about groupings, have a look in the RMS Help Center. So to add a grouping, we simply click on add, find the grouping we're looking for. In this case, it's a category. Yours could be a room type or apartment type, and then we give it a description. That's the first step, and that's quite simple. The next step is assigning that grouping to your room type or category. So in the side menu, you'll search for your categories or room types. And then you'll find the room type or category that you want to assign the grouping to. And then down the left hand side under extra details, you'll find your groupings. Select the grouping you want to assign. And then save and exit. That has now created your room type groupings or your category groupings, and that'll show down the left hand side in your filters. All right, so that's enough of down the left hand side. We're now going to have a look at the icons across the top of the screen here. For the first two icons we have here, I've logged onto a different database just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, additional functionality. So this one has mobile keys and a key cutting function. So to cut a key for a guest, we simply select the guest we want to cut a key for, and then we click on the icon. This one here is for mobile keys, for door locks that support that. We can send a mobile key to a guest mobile number. Or alternatively, the more traditional way of cutting a key is using a key fob or a key cutter. And here we can choose the options of what we want to set for each key we're going to cut, and then cut those keys. For these functions to work, you'll need to activate the key modules in the module market. So down the left hand side of RMS, you'll come down the very bottom to module market. 
Now, you may not see this. The primary system administrator will have access to this, as will other security profiles. Um, if you don't see this, uh, ask your system administrator or contact RMS support. In the module market, you can see there's a whole host of modules here that you can connect to, and we're adding more every week. For this instance, uh, under Activated, you can see here that I've connected to the Salto door locks, which has given me the option of cutting the mobile keys or the key cards. Okay, coming back to our original database, the next icon across the top is the check in or check out icon. From here, you can check reservations in. So I'm under expected arrivals right now. And this is the check in icon with the arrow going in. If we come down here to the expected departures, the icon changes to an arrow checking out. Depending on what screen you're in as to how that icon is going to look. This is really handy when it comes to checking in and out groups or even just individual guests. So for example, if a group is arriving, we can check in the group here by clicking on each individual guest in the group and checking them in. We don't necessarily need to go into the reservations to check them in individually. We can check them in here if all check-in requirements have been completed. When it comes to checking out, this also can be really handy. You can see here I've got a group reservation. They've all left at the same time. Uh, and we can check them out assuming they all have paid their accounts. Uh, you can see in this instance here, I've got one reservation here with an outstanding balance, so I won't check that one out. But I can select them all here and check them all out in one go. Nice and easy. This is also handy when you have a key drop facility. Guests may have left keys in the key drop. You can get those keys, come in here, select the reservations that have left the keys, and then check them out in bulk. Coming back to our expected arrivals, the next icon across the top is our communications icon. Under the communications, there's a whole host of actions that we can do in here that will make your day a lot more efficient. If you're a property that still prints registration cards, here you can print out bulk registration cards from the in-out movement screen, all in one go. You simply select all the reservations you want to print a registration card for, and then click on bulk registration. This will then give you a preview of your registration cards, and then you just click on the print icon to print out each registration card. Too easy. For this to work though, you'll need to set up which form letter you want to use as your registration card. To do that, you'll need to make sure that you have a form letter first. So you'll find that in your form letter setup. In your form letters, you'll need to ensure that you have a registration card already set up and configured. Once you have that, in the left-hand menu, we'll need to go to Property Information. Edit your property. And then down the left-hand side, go to Options and assign the registration card form letter here. And save and exit. The other options underneath the communication icon is send letter and send SMS. These two functions will allow you to send a form letter or send a text message to all the guests that you have selected here. This can be used in a lot of different ways, depending on what works for you. A good example is in the afternoon, if you're waiting for guests to arrive, you can send a text message to all the guests that haven't arrived yet, advising them of what to do when they arrive. Alternatively, if you want to send correspondence to all guests arriving in the next week, you simply change the date range up here for the full week. And then you can send a form letter or a text message to all the guests that are arriving within the week. To be able to send a text message though, you'll need to activate that in the module market. So we had a look at the module market just a moment ago. And if you just search for SMS in the module market, you can see here there's the two-way SMS text messaging. Simply activate this and follow the prompts to be able to send text messages from within RMS. As you can see here, it does say SMS two-way. This will allow the guest to respond to a text message and those text messages will show in the message center in RMS up here, which you can then respond to a guest and communicate both ways. 
Text messaging can also be handy for emergency procedures. So maybe there's a flood warning or a fire warning nearby. So you can send a text message to all guests that are in house, advising them of the warning and what to do. The next option down here is batch invoice. This can be really quite handy if you need to invoice guests that have already checked out or guests that are departing today or departing tomorrow. You can then choose to send a batch invoice to all guests that have been selected here. Moving across to the next icon, you can see that there are three options here. The first one is add reservation. As it says in the box, this will simply add a new reservation. It will take you to the quick quote screen to add a new booking. The second icon is bulk copy. This can be handy if you have some guests that are in-house or arriving or departing and they want to make a new reservation. Everything is staying the same except we want to copy just for new dates. So for example here, we select the Freeman booking and then we choose bulk copy. We simply choose the dates for when they want to arrive next and then click on copy. All right, so this has quickly made two new reservations for the new dates. The third option in here is process no-shows. For this to work, you'll need to set up the no-show first. And for this example, let's use Andrew Floyd here. Let's say Andrew is not arriving today, or he didn't show up today, or he didn't show up yesterday. <laughs> in the options here of process no-shows, we have the message here, do you want to apply a no-show fee? If we choose yes, it's advising me he has an outstanding balance, which is true. And we'll have a look at that in just a second. So when we process this, Andrew Floyd drops off of the expected arrivals and you can see he's now down here under the no-shows. If he does arrive, we can just edit his reservation and check him back in. So we can change his status here to unconfirmed or we can change the status here under update reservation to unconfirmed or confirmed. Both will do the same thing. And then we can bring him back into activity. If we go into his reservation account under accommodation, you can see that there's a cancellation fee or a no-show fee that has been charged to his account automatically. You can see that he paid a deposit of $135 and the cancellation fee is $135. That's because his deposit to confirm the reservation was the first night's accommodation. So you can see up here, we've got the first night accommodation is $135. So to set this up, there's a few little steps. First of all, in the setup menu, in your Sundry setup, you'll need to ensure that you have a cancellation or a no-show fee Sundry charge already set up in here. If not, you'll need to create one. Once that's created, you'll need to go to your rate manager chart. And in the rate manager, go to your rate tables. Edit the table that you want to put a no-show fee on. And then down the left-hand side, we have no-show fee. Here you can choose a percentage or an amount. Uh, I chose a first night and then apply the sundry charge that you've just created. Once you've done that, save and exit. That no-show fee now will automatically apply when using the process no-show functions. That no-show fee will also apply if you're using the night order end of day function. Okay, the next icon I wanna show you is the projected balance icon. This needs to be activated first and you can do that underneath your accounting options. In your accounting options, you'll need to choose your specific property and then go to account screen. And then you'll see down here, show projected balance. Once that's activated, on the in-out movement screen, select your property if you have a property selection. And then you'll see this icon here, calculate projected balance. You'll notice here that there's a column called projected balance, this one here. What this will do, this will calculate how much the guest has yet to pay before they depart. So if we select everybody here and then click on the calculate projected balance, it's going to take a little second to calculate depending on how many reservations you have. And then it will show what the outstanding balance will be when the guest checks out. So let's have a look at this here. Let's go to the reservation number here for Shauna Lynn. 
And you can see there's a lot going on here account. You've got a base rate with a package component. There's a discount with the total rate here. If we go into the accommodation account here, you'll see here that the projected balance shows here on the end in brackets. Uh, the account is in credit by $122.50, but her total rate is $925. So there's a lot of figures going on here. Let's have a look. When we go into the account, you can see that there's been a receipt already processed. There's been a couple of charges on here, a shop sale, the package component, breakfast, discount, which has put her in credit by $122.50. Which means that by the time she comes to check out, including every night's accommodation that's posted, including the champagne down here, the champagne on arrival, the extra $100, the balance when she comes to check out is going to be $617.50. So the projected balance is your base rate plus any packages plus any, less any discounts including any requirements and also any add-ons that may be associated to a reservation. All of them calculated over each night of this day less any payments already received gives us the projected balance. All right, back on the in-out movement screen. The next icon here is really handy. This is our set columns icon. If we click on this, you can see a list of all the columns and information you can see on a reservation. You'll notice that half of mine are turned off. If I exit out of here, this is all the information you see scrolling across the bottom. Not all the information on the screen here you need to see. So quite simply, in here, if you don't want to use projected balance, for example, you can untick projected balance, save and exit, and the projected balance column is removed from your view. The other thing you can do from the set column screen is you can move columns around. So maybe you've got the projected balance here and you want to move that in front of the regular balance. So you can have it highlighted in blue and then click on the up arrow to move it into a different position. And then you can move it wherever you want to keep it. There's a lot of information on here. Um, I'm going to run through some of my favorites for you and see how they can help you on a day-to-day -day basis. Just starting across the front here, you see here we have the master reservation number and the individual reservation number. I like to have these collapse minimized a little bit because I know what these numbers are. I don't really need to see the label. I just want to see the individual numbers. So I can hold my mouse pointer in between and I can shrink these columns to give me a bit more space on my screen so I can see more information down here. The other thing I can do to give myself more space on the screen is this side menu. In the afternoon, when I'm on the uh, evening shift, I'll have my expected arrivals up on the screen so I know who's coming. I don't necessarily need to see this anymore. I can click on this icon here, which is our hamburger menu, and that'll hide that side menu. If I want to see that again, I just click on the hamburger menu again to get that information back. But by minimizing that, I can see a lot more information here up to my reservation notes. This is really handy if you want to see more information or if you're working on a smaller screen. You can expand or collapse that at will. That's the same with the side menu. You may have noticed that I always have this collapsed, which has given me more space. You can collapse the side menu by clicking on this arrow up here. If I click on that arrow, it's going to lock the side menu in. So it's going to stay there and I see a lot less information on my screen here. By clicking on this arrow, it's going to automatically collapse the side menu. And when I hover my mouse over the side, it's going to pop up. When I remove my mouse, it collapses again. And here with the hamburger menu, I can toggle that to collapse that to give me more space here. Moving across here, I've got my group name. I've got my VIP code. Uh, if you use VIPs or if you have VIPs, this is really quite handy. You can add the VIP codes in the lookup tables. Just search for VIP codes and you'll need to add in your VIP codes. I've got very important person and very, very important person. <laughs> and then you can assign that to the guest profile. We have the guest last name or surname, first name or given name, area, category. With the category column, again, I don't need to see this much. I can minimize that. I know what my rooms are. I've got my one bedrooms and my studios. So I can just collapse that to show my room types. 
Another thing here that's quite handy is you can see here I've got no area, so I can click on the no area icon to assign an area to this reservation. Another little function here that's really handy, we have our auto allocation utility. So with the auto allocation utility, you can see all the reservations here that haven't had a room allocated to them. I can select which ones I want to automatically allocate, and up the top here, I can then choose allocate. So that will automatically apply a room to each of these reservations in one quick action. Back to our in-app movement screen, and you can see all areas have been updated. The next column here is the clean status. I like to see if the rooms are dirty or clean prior to arrival. I can then follow up on this with the housekeeping team if I need to. I've got all my arrivals for the evening and I can see that these rooms are dirty and they will need to be cleaned before the guest arrives. Alternatively, if the guest arrives early, I can see that the room is clean and ready for them to check in. Again, I don't need to see the actual description. I can minimize that just to a red and green dot if I'd like, which is quite easy. Green is good to go, red is not ready just yet. The next column is another column I like to see, which is the balance column, which shows me the balance of the accounts. Another little handy tip here is if you click on the column header, it will sort numerically. Here I can see this is my highest bill going down to my lowest bill. So I can see who's got the high bills. So this replaces the high bill report, and I can see that their account is getting a little bit high and I may want to follow up on that. The next column, the projected balance, we've spoken about previously, and then we've got the refund column. If we have any guests that are checking out that we need to perform a refund for, we can see that very clearly here. These refunds are for refundable deposits like key deposits or security deposits. The next column, we have the account number. Again, I find this really handy. Even though it's not blue, like the reservation number, you can click on the account number to take you straight to the account. So by clicking on that, I can see here I've got a key deposit that was paid, which is refundable, and now I can refund that deposit. So that's a quick way of accessing the account without having to go through the reservation. So going to the reservation and then going to the account, I can go directly to the account by clicking on the account number. I then have the ETA column, another column that I enjoy. Estimated time of arrival. This is a free type field on a reservation, so you can type in whatever you like, noon, uh, midday, after 12. Another handy tip is maybe a flight number. If you know what flight number they're coming in on, you can put their flight number in here so you can track when they're arriving. Maybe the flight is delayed, you'll be aware of that then. The other two columns, arrival and depart, pretty simple. Another little tip is I like to collapse mine right down just to the day and the month. I don't need to see the year all the time. Unless your property uses the times, you can just collapse this right down just to the day and the month, again to give you more space on your screen. Let's collapse that again. The next one here is number of nights. So you've got the arrival date, the departure date, and the number of nights. Again, I don't need to see the full label, number of nights. I can collapse that right down, as I know this is the number of nights after the arrival and departure date. We've got the status column of unconfirmed or confirmed reservations, which is quite handy to know, and the number of people staying in a room. You may have seen this column before and not quite understood what this stands for. 2A means two adults, 0C means zero children, and 0I means zero infants. So that's adults, children, and infants. <laughs> the next column over, reservation note. Quite simply, I like to have this field a little bit larger as there's often more information here that I want to see at a quick glance. If there's a lot of information, I can just go directly to the reservation, but I can see here that there is a note that I need to be aware of. Company, travel agent, and wholesaler, also really handy fields just to see who's paying for this reservation. It could be a company that's paying for the booking, travel agent, it could be an OTA from booking.com or Expedia, or it could be a wholesaler. We've also got the rate type and the nightly rate, and these are really handy when it comes to the night orders or working in the afternoon, just to ensure that everybody is being charged the correct rate. And then finally, we have here our mobile and email. I like to have these at the very end because this is handy when it comes to using our communications here. When we're sending out form letters or text messages, 
Uh, maybe we've got a late arrival, I want to call the guest. I've got the information here on my screen. So this is my preferred view and my preferred layout. And what's really good to know is once I've set this in the preferred view and layout that I want to use, the action of closing out of this screen. So when you click on exit, it is now going to remember your settings for this screen. So when you log back in, it defaults to my view and the layout that I set. And you can see here, I've just got my clean status as colored dots and I've got my number of nights as single digits. And the columns are in the order that I left them in. So just to recap, set your columns how you want to view them and then close out of this. So when you log back in next time, it's going to open up to your preferred view. Finally, across the top, we have our print icon here. There's two options in the print button. You can print our default report. So this is a hard coded report. Maybe handy, it's up to you. It'll just give you a summary of what's happening for your arrivals today. You can do this report for your expected arrivals and for your expected departures to give you an idea here of who's coming and going. You can see here two adults and one children, as I mentioned before. The other option under here is to print the first six columns. So this will do, as it says in the box, it'll print the first six columns you see on your screen here. And there we go, there are our first six columns. And then we have a refresh icon across the top and log out. As you can see, the in-out movement screen is a really handy screen to have open on your desktop at all times. So often in the morning, you'll have your in-out movement screen set to expected departures. And as they check out, this will depreciate. And in the afternoon, you'll have it set to expected arrivals. And as they check in, this list will become shorter and shorter as well. Also with your expected arrivals in the afternoon, you can print registration cards for them if you want to. You can cut keys for them prior to arrival, or you can send them communications prior to them arriving as well. So with this screen being super handy, there's one last tip I'm going to leave you with, and that is that you can assign this screen to automatically open when you log in. So there are two areas you can do that. One is against the security profile. So down the side menu under security profiles, you may or may not have access to this. So uh, if you don't see it, don't be surprised. You may need to ask your system administrator for access to this. Here with my security profile of front office, for example, I can set the landing page or the starting page to be my in-out movement screen. So anyone that has the security profile of front office will automatically open up to the in-out movement screen whenever they log in. The second place you can do this is against individual users. So under setup, under users, we have user information. Editing the individual users, you can see here we have a default landing page and this user we may want to set to the in-app movement screen. So there you can do it on an individual user or at a security profile level. So there we have it. That was a deeper dive into more functions on the in-app movement screen. And I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something. Uh, and I hope I can make your day a little bit smoother and more efficient. Thank you for watching.